did you know that cat owners are 40% less likely to have a heart attack than non-cat owners? It's because of the calming effect they have on us. But there are exceptions to the rule. The cats you're about to see would do anything but lower your blood pressure. We're back with a brand new series devoted to our favourite animals, cats. Good boy. We're going to get you. In this new series, there'll be more kitties close to catastrophe. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. These have lived outdoors. I thought I saw fleas on one of them. We can treat for that. With more dramatic rescues from the professionals who dedicate their lives to saving them. Inspector Paul for 9777, are you receiving over? A lady saw a cat with two kittens on the hard shoulder. One of the kittens is in here. We'll meet the cat-loving members of the public determined to help these amazing creatures. When we first met them, they were really tiny. They are about that big. And I'll be back at some of the country's busiest animal hospitals to experience firsthand what life is like treating ill and injured moggies. Hello, head surgeon's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> hoovered up a cat. <laughs> In today's show, there are ups and downs. Agile as usual, like a ballerina. Some tiny kittens trapped up in a loft space mean an action-packed rescue for Matt Brown. But the one that was screaming, crying, must have fell down into the downspout. All right, buddy. There's no way that cat's getting out of there. It's a long climb down for Inspector Anthony Pulfer as he tries to save a stray tomcat. Right, already the cat's moved. Oh, there's a hole down there. And I find out the most effective way to sedate a feral cat. Now, what he's actually sitting in is something called the crush cage. It sounds like something out of a horror film. Cats are brilliant at getting into confined spaces, but not always so great at getting out. Sometimes they need a little help, don't you? Good morning. How can I help? And can I take a contact telephone number from you, please? So we've got an urgent rescue trapped over here. Cat was kitten up inside the loft. It's been there for around three weeks in Witness. We have packed up that over. In Widnes, animal welfare officer Matt Brown is responding to reports of cats in a loft space. Because they're in the loft space, uh, they can't get access, make access to, to where they are. They just hear them crying. We're going to have to have a little look and see if we can get them on. You'd think it'd be quite simple, but uh, obviously, famous last words. My track record getting cats out of sticky situations is it's all right. You know, it's a good. It's a good 90%. And, yeah, it is such a thing as a simple cat rescue, but I've never had one. Cool. Happy days. Shop owner Helen Cully is waiting inside for Matt. I believe you've got some cats oh. in your loft. Yeah. Excellent. There's a mum cat that we know of yeah. and one of the members of staff. She's seen three little kittens peeking from the hatch. Excellent. No shows where the hatch is. It's thought the kittens have been up there with their mum since they were born a few weeks ago, and any attempts to catch them have so far failed. Yeah, I'm not a big lover. Love I've not it. been upstairs for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> not a cat lover. Have a word, Matt. You can probably hear them crying. The staff have heard the cats from the upstairs stockroom. They're in this loft space at the back. Oh, you can hear them? Yeah. Definitely. Yes, we take the box yeah. of these cats in there anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the. This is the hatch. The hatch where we have seen them peeking through. Matt can hear the cats, but will he be able to see them? Psst, psst, psst. There they are. Yep, 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 yep. There's mum up there as well. Right. Seen the eyes. At the moment, only two of the kittens are visible. Matt springs into action. So, I think I'll just take one at a time, because I'm only going to catch one at a time, I think. I think. Don't forget your hard hat. Health and safety first, Matt. Right. 
agile as usual. Like a ballerina. A mother cat will always seek out somewhere dark and warm to have her kittens. This one may have got in through the shop or the roof, but with the dust, dirt and electric wires, it's far from an ideal place to raise her family. In typical cat fashion, all the moggies have made themselves scarce, but Matt can definitely hear one. Seems the missing kitten has fallen at least six foot beyond the loft ceiling. Right, OK. <sighs> Matt doesn't know if the kitten is injured or just scared, so he wants to get it out quickly. This job, do you think? Ah, it's going to be dead easy, this. But then, you're working in tightest places, then. Oh, I don't believe it. But he's gone. Seems this kitten has done a disappearing act, too and Matt quickly works out what's happened. This is a false ceiling. This is a false ceiling. So they've all gone under. They're in the eaves of the building, all the way around. The one which was screaming, crying, must have fell down into the downspout. The trapped kitten has no access to food or drink, so Matt needs to get him out as a matter of urgency. There's a little poo down here. He's been here for a while. And it seems cat rescuer extraordinaire Matt can even talk cat. No, it is, no. Wait it out. Aye, aye, there he is. The kitten's stuck in a very awkward place. The question is, does Matt have a plan and the tools to get him out? In witness, Matt Brown is attempting to rescue a kitten trapped in a loft space. No, it is, no. Nothing is going to stop Matt getting to this kitten, especially not a lightweight ceiling. It's only plaster balls. I love a man who's good with his hands. And thanks to the wonders of modern technology, he finally has eyes on the kitten. There he is. There he is, right in the corner. We're getting somewhere. But getting the kitten out needs careful planning. He's only four or five foot away, but that four or five foot away is a bit of a pain. So you see, we've got this bracket here, which probably would have held a full seal once before. So I need to work out if there's enough room for me to put the camera there to see what I'm doing. Get a net over. You stay there, you. Phase one of the plan is giving himself more space to manoeuvre, which means bye-bye more plasterboard. Oh, you're gorgeous. What a lovely little cat. Yes, Mo. I'm going to call you Mo. Mo Salah, Mo Salah. <laughs> Running down the wind. Save it for the terraces, Matt. Phase two is using a grasper rather than a net which could get snagged. With electric wiring everywhere, it's not a safe environment for a kitten, and there's no telling how long this little fella's been there. Third time lucky, Matt. Got it. All right, got him. Definitely sounds like you got him. Come on, Mo. Come on, Mo. Oh, I'm out. Ow. Ow. 
Hello, sweetheart. You're going to clean There you go. One. Cat. Hello. 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 What's your favorite? What's your... Hello. Yay! Hello. Time to give shop owner Helen the good news. Got one. Not mum. Not mum, don't worry. Don't like cats, and I'm saying I'll look at her. You do now. You know it's going. Thanks to Matt's agility and perseverance, little Mo is safe. Oi, oi. There we go. Happy days. It doesn't look too bad. Um, I thought it was going to be worse than what he is. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say he's in, he's in not bad nick. Matt's hoping to catch the remaining cats by leaving traps up in the loft space which he'll be checking on over the next few days. But for now, it's time to get little Mo to a vet. There's a large number of feral cats in the UK, and this has its own problems for the moggies. Viral infection, FIV, can be passed on when fighting, commonly through saliva in cat bites. To try and prevent the spread of the virus, when a feral cat is brought to the Putney Animal Hospital, it's tested for FIV. I'm bringing in a new patient for vet Michael Lazarus and hospital assistant Abby Rayside. Hi, Michael. Hi, Hi Abby. Um, is this the first cat to be tested? Yes, he is. So he was captured um, with three of his siblings, so he's actually a feral kitten. Right. Um, so not the friendliest. OK, and obviously a feral cat's a bit more difficult to test than a... It depends. We gauge the situation. Yeah. But in um, his case, he's quite aggressive. Right. So what we need to do is give him a sedation first so that he can do no harm. Elephant um, gun. Exactly. From the back and of the And then uh, just a little dark gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then once he's um, sedated, we'll go ahead, do the blood test. Does he have a name? No, he doesn't. Well, I've thought of one. Can we call him Will Ferrell? <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. Brilliant. Will Ferrell. Perfect. To sedate a fearsome beast like Will here, special equipment is required. Now, what he's actually sitting in is something called a crush cage. Yes. Um, which we sometimes have to use. Basically, it allows us to inject cats without taking them out. It sounds like something out of a horror film. Yep. Unfortunately, it's, it's often the least stressful way to, to allow us to inject them. OK. So I need to try and inject this into his muscle, which is often easier said than done. Actually, he's got some muscle right there. Brace yourself, Will. There we go. Wow, well done. done. <laughs> OK, so basically, um, he's been injected with the station. Give him a few minutes, and then he'll be uh, ready to go. So what exactly is FIV? Is it similar to HIV? So FIV stands for feline immunodeficiency virus. Um, it's a virus that once it affects um, a cat, it starts attacking their immune system. Right. So um, after a certain period of time, cats can't really fight off infections like they usually would. And that's when you start seeing sick cats coming in. Right. And is it, is it easy to treat? So unfortunately, once a cat has FIV, you can't eliminate the virus, so they have it for the rest of their life. If you have a healthy cat with FIV, what we often advise at RSPCA is people who adopt these cats keep the cats indoors. So, so they, they don't go out and... Exactly, they can't fight with other cats. Right. Um, they can't spread the virus. Um, also, they're less likely to pick up infections from other cats. Yeah. With Will now under sedation, Michael can take a blood sample from his jugular vein. If Will proves to be negative, he'll be able to have a new life on a farm. It's, it's so weird just seeing them with their eyes open, because I keep thinking he's awake and just being very well behaved. Look away now if you're not a fan of needles or blood. This is the FIV snap test that we use. Right. OK. So what you're going to do yeah. is put a single drop of blood 
in each of these little wells over here. Right, so just one drop just in each. A single drop in there and a single drop in there. Perfect. And then one that side. Lovely. Hey, Vex Cool Test. You're a natural. <laughs> Michael dilutes the blood, then we wait for the results to show. We basically wait for a number of lines to okay. form. OK. So if we see a single line, that's okay. good news, negative. If we see two lines, that means he might have FIV. Okay. It's like a pregnancy it's test. It's kind of isn't like it? a pregnancy yeah. test, yeah. Michael's going to use our waiting time well by microchipping Will. So what we have for the microchipping is a rather large needle, which yeah. you can see there. Inside there is the microchip, which is basically the size of a grain of rice. Wow, okay. Um, so what we do is we inject the needle under the skin, push the grain of rice through, and that's the microchip sitting there, and that stays with him for the rest of his life. Which when bit we... does that go into then? <laughs> which so, bit of him? Um, what we usually do is we scruff the skin around the oh, neck okay. here, and then basically push that in. So once it's through the skin, then you just fire that, and then pull out. And pretty straightforward, yep, isn't it? pretty straightforward. Not sure I'd be saying that if he was awake, though. So Will is now chipped and easy to identify, but is he virus-free and cleared for farm action? So I think the test is ready. What we can see here, this is the FIV on the bottom, and by the C there's a single line. Right. Which luckily means that it's negative. So oh. Will doesn't have FIV. Fantastic. It would be positive if there was a second line of there by the T. So that's great news. Well done, Will. Well done, Will. That's really interesting. I've never even heard of FIV. And I kind of feel like I bonded with Will Ferrell, even though he wasn't conscious. Reminds me of when I was at college. Last week at South Godston Animal Centre, we met a cute little kitten called Tiger, who had been rescued from a multi-cat household. Tiger has been the most lovely, affectionate, sweetest little thing that you've ever met um, the whole time since she arrived. Although she's just nine months old, she was heavily pregnant with her own babies. You can see straight away that she's really young. So this is, well, I think definitely her first litter. From her scan, it looked as if she was expecting a litter of four. They all look healthy and lovely. Um, they all were moving, the hearts were fine. What do you say? Are we going to take care of babies? Are we? Oh, that was a lovely kiss, wasn't it? And now, just a little belatedly, Tiger's babies have started to arrive into the world. Animal care assistants Sapphire Taylor and Steph White are watching to make sure it all goes smoothly. I've never seen a cat give birth before, so it's absolutely incredible. She's done such an amazing job already. Um, she's only had one so far. The second one's just coming out now. She's doing a really good job in cleaning them all up nicely. As predicted, Tiger gives birth to four kittens. All the little kittens are trying to feed off her, and it's just a natural instinct that they go for it really quickly. Newborn kittens are blind, and their ear canals are closed, making them deaf too. It's a full-time job being a mum, as well as relying on Tiger to keep them warm. The kittens will feed from her every one to two hours, and within a week, they should double their weight. We won't handle them for the first few days, because it just gets rid of mum's scent, and that's the last thing we want to do. For the first three to four weeks, Tiger will also have to stimulate the kitties to go to the toilet, using her tongue on their back ends and eating their waste. Mmm, that's mother love for you. Bless her. She does look knackered, though, I have to admit. Yeah, <laughs> she does. She looks really tired. I want them all. <laughs> I think we all do. It's quite an experience seeing kittens being born, even for the staff. Yeah, it's so lovely to watch. It made me well up. I nearly cried. <laughs> yeah, it was really sweet. We don't know if they're male or female yet, but we'll find out in a few weeks, hopefully. We'll be watching to see how these little handfuls of fluff develop over the next few weeks. Good luck, Tiger. Coming up... Oh, I can see it. All right, mate. Well, it's quite a way down. 
a stray cat stuck 30 foot down needs some help from Inspector Anthony Pulfer. For him to be backed up like that in the corner makes me feel like he's stuck and can't go any further. And I help to treat a cute little kitten with a badly crushed paw. Do you want to give it a flush for us? Oh, why not? Perfect. 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 I'm a natural. <laughs> We've already seen kittens getting stuck in high places. But to be honest with you, if there's a hole, it's just as happy getting stuck down that as well. I have a uh, urgent rescue down, down regarding a cat in uh, Penge, London. It's tracked down a light well. It may have been there around a week. Inspector Anthony Pulfer is responding to the emergency call. A cat has possibly fallen from quite a height into a light well amongst flats. In London, we do have quite a high, what we'd say, stray cat population. You know, a lot of sometimes feral cats as well. So a cat's getting in themselves in a bit of a pickle can be quite frequent. If a cat's trapped in a particular situation where there's no food, no water around it, and we don't actually know how long it's been in that position, then it's a real worry as to its hydration and whether it's at risk of immediate sickness and possible collapse, really. With a cat trapped on a building site, Anthony goes full health and safety before stepping into the fray. The site manager wasn't aware of this cat being there, uh, but he's allowed us access to go and have a look, see if we can see this cat, um, see what we find. Apparently, it's through this hole here. Oh, I can see it. Oh, mate. Oh, it's quite a way down. All right, buddy. There's no way that cat's getting out of there. The black cat is around 30 feet down in a tiny courtyard. It's a long way for any cat to fall without injuring itself. Not much resources down there for it, and only one access in and out, really, and this lady's not in at the moment, so I'm going to have to get down there and try and rescue it. Whenever I go into a rescue, I'm always thinking, I'm no use to anybody if I can't get to my next rescue. So yes, safety is paramount. Um, I love the challenge, though. That's the good thing about that is, you know, the, the joy is of actually getting to that cat and uh, getting to where the, where the rescue's needed. Right, let's see what kit we need. We have one of those, a grasper, a gloves, a ladder, and I'll grab a basket. OK, let's have a little think. A little bit of climbing done now, shall we? With the day's temperature already almost 30 degrees, the cat must be very dehydrated. And for Anthony, it's going to be a sweaty job. OK, lovely. Right, already the cat's moved. Oh, there's a hole down there. where this cat is. A scared and cornered cat will probably panic, and it could bite or scratch Anthony, so it's safety first once again. We're going straight for the grasper. No hands on this cat, but for him to be backed up like that in the corner makes me feel like he's stuck and can't go any further. All right, buddy. Smelly down here, isn't it? He looks trapped, but Anthony can't be sure that the cat might find an underground escape route and end up in even more danger. All right, buddy. Right, I've got it round the head. Due to I'm so concerned that I could lose the cat to underground here, I'm going to have to be a quick motion, really, just to bring him to, to above ground, really. A very brief discomfort is in this cat's favour. All right, buddy. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Shh, 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 shh. All right. Shh, shh, shh. It's all right, it's OK. It's all right. It's OK, it's OK. Just do not get hurt, he's just stressed. Let's get this off you. The cat doesn't seem to have any injuries. It's just a bit grubby. Generally quite a filthy environment. I've been here five minutes and I'm covered. OK. I've got you tight, OK? You'd be better to get out of here, trust me. It's 
Okay. You go there. Well done. Whew. Well done you, Anthony. It's been a hot and stressful rescue for him and the cat. I didn't get this much sweat with the London Marathon last year. But at least the dirty tomcat is safe and well. I hope you like a nice grub. I've got the best in the van. All right. All right, bit of jelly, bit of gravy. Oh, scorcher today, isn't it? Yeah. Not a day to be a black cat. Now he's sure the cat isn't injured, the priorities are to check for a microchip. OK. OK, no chip at the moment. I know. The tomcat may have owners who haven't registered him, or he may be a stray. Is that nice? Sorry I've ruined your cage slightly, but it's nice you to have something to eat. He's not immediately massively dehydrated or hungry. He's uh, in good health, so actually, you know, we, let, we could be seeing him on his way. If a cat's unharmed and just straying and just got himself in a bit of pickle and, and needs rescuing, a lot of the times they're just keen to get back to their environment and releasing sometimes the best option. Because if his welfare's not immediately compromised, then it's probably better to be where it is. I'm going to make that call that we're going to actually release the cat in situ. I want to go a little bit further down the road, uh, a shady area there, to, some, to go in someone's front garden and then find his bearings. But you'd be surprised how quickly a cat gets its bearings. Okay. It's okay. All right, you go find home. Okay. It's all right. Off you go, puss. You're free. Okay. You find your bearings, all right? Good lad. With any luck, this handsome lad will be back on his patch in no time. Animal Hospital, they treat cats with all kinds of emergency ailments. But I've never seen an injury quite like this one before. A kitten with a severely squashed paw. The kitty, called Stanley, is in the safe hands of head vet Caroline Allen and nurse Emma Turner, who are assessing him today. Hi there, Caroline, Caroline and Emma. Oh, who have we got Hello. here? So this is a little boy kitten, um, probably about four weeks old. Did he, did he get his foot a bit squashed. Yeah, we don't know how. He was brought in by one of our inspectors and the description was leg hanging off because it just looked like it had been crushed. I mean, obviously, we don't know dear. what by, so... Ah. And how's he managing, then, at the moment? Can he use that leg at all, or is it just really...? So, with the dressing, sort of offering support, he's using it a little bit. Um, but obviously, he's on sort of strong painkillers and antibiotics because it was very crushed, it was really infected. Um, and he was pretty poorly when he came in. Poor little Stanley. He needs his dressings changed daily to keep the wound clean. If a serious injury like this gets infected, it could be life-threatening. How far down does... I'm looking forward to seeing how far down his paw goes, cos it looks much longer than his actual it leg. It actually is, because of the dressing that we have to put over the you paw. You put a load of padding, yeah. Big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's really hard. Oh, OK, OK. All right. All right, then. Oh dear. Isn't so um, what's happening with his foot? Is it just really swollen? So where it's crushed, it yeah, it's, it's just swollen, flattened but and he's made got it look quite bigger. A lot of wounds all around underneath yeah. it as well. It looks really, really sore and awful, you know. And I'm surprised he's not making more noise and more of a fuss, to be honest. I mean, actually, although it does look, you know, really nasty, the wounds themselves are actually. Clean and they're healing and they're up a bit, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't look infected or anything. No. So we're going to give it a little clean and a flush, right? So, do you want to give it a flush for us? Oh, why not? So, just by flushing, it just helps sort of gently remove any bacteria, any infection. Okay, um, that's a big needle for a titchy kitten. Sort of hold the needle about a centimetre away, you don't need to be right, right on it, and literally okay. just... Just squirt it. Squirt, yeah, so... Oh, sweetheart. Perfect, yeah. perfect. I'm a natural. <laughs>
Stanley's little paw could have been squashed by a car or by something falling on it, but we'll never know for sure. The brave lad has three layers of dressing put back on his leg. And luckily, I'm here to help add the vital extra flourish. What's the little heart for? Just because it's cute and it's Oh, fun. OK. Because <laughs> you know that his heart's not actually in his leg, don't you, Emma? Yes. <laughs> Just means that we love him. It is gorgeous. There we go. Oh, Here look. Goes Stanley. So is it a crushing verdict for Stanley? What are his chances of keeping that leg? If the foot is still looking as it is, then the leg will be amputated. But, yeah, I mean, if, if he does lose the leg, it won't be the end of the world, you know. We almost sort of can joke that cats have a spare leg. Well, absolutely. Um, and certainly losing it at a young age, um, he's going to adapt to that really well. Well, good luck, Stanley. Let's see. You never know. You might be able to hang on to it. Poor flat Stanley, I feel really sorry for him, but he's getting amazing care and I know he's in the best possible place he could be. In Widnes, Matt Brown has just come from a grubby rescue, saving a kitten from a loft space. Yeah, look at the kip of me. I'm an absolute disgrace, again. The little kitten he's named Mo had fallen six foot down a hole to the ceiling space below. Meow. Meow, meow, meow. And Mo's had a lot to say about it. Matt's brought Mo to the local animal hospital for a check over by vet Riaz Remu. Hoi hoi. Oh, not again. Here we go. <laughs> oh, God. It's deja vu for Riaz. Last time he saw Matt, he'd just come from a particularly sooty rescue of a cat from a chimney. So it's been stuck in the chimney for four days. You have the cat. Who's this? This is Mo. He was with the family. Yeah. But they had if obviously been a shop, they had full slick ceilings. Oh, right. So the where he was, he dropped down about six, eight foot. Wow. So he had a bit of a bump. Matt had trouble getting worried Mo into the cage after his traumatic rescue, but he looks much more placid now. It's gonna if it bolts. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. okay, let's pop it onto there for a second. Hey, come on. There we go. Right. Let me take over. Okay, Baba. First thing I'm gonna check is if the kitten's well hydrated, because obviously it's been stuck in this loft, you said, for a bit. Yes. Can you see how the, the premolars are coming out there? So we're looking about seven to eight weeks at this point. So we have a feel of its kidneys. Kidneys are okay. Generally unremarkable. There's a tiny bit of food, actually, in its belly, which is oh, good. Cool. So it's been eating. The one thing you don't want these little kittens to do is go for periods without food. Mm -hmm. You can see he's up and about, he's, he's vocal, he's, he's, he looks in good nick. It was um, a little fighter, like, he was having a bit of a hiss in it. Yeah, yeah, you've done something, you've obviously tamed him a little bit. Yeah. I don't know how. I talked to him sweetly. Oh, Matt, you charmer. A cat in this condition is, you know, at this age, we can bring them round to be rehomeable very quickly. I mean, you can see just with a little bit of attention, he's actually enjoying it quite a lot. <laughs> but he's not feral, not at all. It'll make a lovely house cat. It's a bit of a sweetie, actually. Sweet Mo will need to be wormed and start his vaccinations before he can be rehomed. Yeah, Mo. Hopefully, he won't be walking alone for much longer. We'll catch up with him later. See you, Mo. Also coming up, Hershey Bowl introduces us to some extraordinary kittens with more than their fair share of toes. It's not something I see often, you know, and I, obviously I pick up lots of cats and kittens. Look at your big feet! Who doesn't love a kitten's paws? As well as using them to run, climb, hunt and clean themselves with, they sweat through them as well. And some cats have even more extraordinary paws than these. We're at Newbrook Animal Centre, where we'll be making regular appointments throughout the series. This week, Inspector Hershey Bowl is visiting a family of cats she recently rescued. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Mummy. Are they your babies? 
A couple of evenings ago, I had to attend a call about uh, multiple cats in a flat. And after a bit of a discussion with the owner, um, persuaded him really to sign over um, this mum cat and, and at least these four kittens. But two of the kittens are not like the others. If you look at the paws, um, in very interestingly, it's got six toes. I know, darling, on, um, on both the front and the back. Look at your big feet. Your normal cat has four toes on each paw, plus a dew claw on each front foot. But this kitten and her tabby sister are what is known as a polydactyl or mitten cat. It's a genetic mutation that gives them extra toes. It's not something I see often, you know, and I, obviously I pick up lots of cats and kittens and um, I just thought it made this one a bit special, really. Uh, I mean, you look at your face. OK, baby, baby. All right. I know, bye, sweetheart. Be good. The two polydactyl tabby kittens seem healthy, but vet Nora Santin Bernacki and hospital assistant Abby Harvey are going to check them over. So this cat has an extra toe on, on its back legs. You can see it's just right there. I know. It doesn't normally cause an issue. It just, if anything, sometimes they've got loads, sometimes they can get caught and they need the nails clipped. But other than that, it's normally not a... A lot of people, a lot of cats have them and people don't notice them. Oh, <laughs> you can really see it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven toes. Six weeks on, and how are the Bigfoot kittens getting on? The good news is they've both been rehomed together with Paul and Helen Furness, and they've been named Luna and Willow. It wasn't their extra toes that were the main draw, though. Well, they were just typical kittens, basically, weren't they? They yeah. were just very, very cute. Once we sort of, they, they started to have them some fuss and love from us, that's when we, we, we noticed how big their, their paws were. It just added to, added to the cuteness, really. The cats are really special, certainly are to us anyway. They do rule the house. Um, our whole life revolves around them. Seems these two playful sisters have really landed on their oversized paws. Well, most of the time. <laughs> they're, they're very, very, very lively. We've got claw marks everywhere. <laughs> but it's worth it. All houses should have kittens. <laughs> I'll second that. It is, right in the corner. Earlier, Matt Brown rescued eight-week-old oh, kitten Mo from a loft space above a shop. Hello, sweetheart. You can clean off. Here we go. But the mum cat and her two other kittens proved elusive. So traps were left to try and catch them. And a day later, when Matt went to check the traps, one more kitten was captured. Hello. The last cat which was in the trap that went in nicely, no, pro no problems at all. The other one's not here. I think it's gone with its, with its mother. I think mother, mum's taken it, but it's def definitely, definitely not up there. Fast forward nine weeks, and after being fostered, both Mo and his brother have found a forever home, together with Jack Thompson and his mum, Sue. And Mo has a new name, too. He's now Bert, to go with little brother Ernie. Jack and Sue were smitten at first sight of the little Muppets. They were so cute. They were adorable. Once you've seen them, you can't turn your back on them. You just have to take them. The two brothers have been in their new home for just over three weeks, and don't they just love the attention? As soon as you walk in the house, they'll come straight to you to be stroked. As you can see, Ernie's under my knee, and Bert will come straight over like he has now. They both like a good fuss together. Seems there's a lot of brotherly love here too. I think that they've got a really close bond. You'll often find them curled up together asleep. And they do follow each other around. And they have a long red lace that one pulls one end and the other chases after it. It's like a tug of war. So we knew we were going to have our hands full, but... That's kittens. From stuck in a loft space 
to living the high life. It's really nice that we can change their lives after they've had a, a rocky start. It seems like we've already had them forever. Working on this show isn't just about cuddling cats. Sometimes, me and the other stars of the show have our mugshots taken cuddling cats. All in the name of publicity for this, our new series. Today, we're being snapped by photographer to the stars, Adam Lawrence. Mm, time to get myself ready for my close-up. This is where the magic happens. See, transformed into a lithe beauty. Hiya. Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> Make it easy for you. So I'm just seeing lots and lots of cats in this picture with Joe bang in the middle, bright green. There's just one thing missing. Perfect. Are we just waiting for a cat? Honestly, hundreds of bleeding cats here, and we're waiting for one. <laughs> My co-star is the one-eyed and fabulously mustachioed Sebi. What is he like? Is he? He's very, very cuddly. Oh, okay. Come on, matey. There we go. Oh. oh. Famous last words. Three, two, one. That's great. Gotcha. Sebi. Sebby, you're a natural. <laughs> Just kiss, Sebby. Yeah, what is all that going on? I don't know either. Good boy. But sadly, Sebby doesn't seem to have a very long attention span. Typical feline. Sebby! Luckily, Adam's used to working with divas, and he speaks Sebby. cat. Meow. Meow, meow. Not interested in the slides. Meow! Gotcha! <laughs> Boom, we've got it, let's go home. Sorted. Well, that went a lot better than a shoot I did for a mag back in 1987. I had to squat on a high stool for 40 minutes because I'd only just started doing comedy and I didn't realise you could say no. And so after about 10 minutes, I couldn't feel my feet at all. Oh, it was awful. Some good ones here, Joe. Oh, good -o. Oh, well yes. done. Yes. Well done, Sebby. So, how do we look? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. I think brilliant photographing cats, such lovely, lovely creatures. The little ones are so docile. The older ones are a bit more inquisitive and running around the studio. I think everyone, everyone's really enjoyed it here. Next time... I completely understand why you're upset. An emotional rescue for Inspector Hershey Bowles. He's completely dragging that back leg. He's not weight-bearing at all. There's Mum. A befriended stray cat proves hard for Matt Brown to get hold of. <laughs> Hello, Cola. And I play what I'm assured is a vital role as I help out with Cola the kitten's castration. I'm going to try to tuck his tail under. That's like the best job I've ever had, oh. holding a cat's tail. Mm -hmm.